I wouldn't say that playing an arpeggio is a beginner pianist type of activity. However, if we keep it within one octave, we can gain a lot of great skills. Hello everybody, I'm Jim. Welcome to Grassroots Piano, motivating you from the beginning and getting skills that you'll need so you can enjoy creating music. So in this video, we'll be diving in with the C arpeggio and some of the benefits are, we'll be opening up our hands a bit more, feeling a little awkward, especially with the left hand fingering, going to be working on the weaker fingers and those are just some of the benefits besides arpeggios are beautiful and it's a skill that we're all going to get into whether we're playing pieces or we're improvising and whatnot let's begin working on this C arpeggio okay arpeggio broken chord or uh, arpeggio an Italian word for playing notes in a succession from ascending to descending hand shape time with the right hand we're going to focus the one finger on C two finger on E third finger on G, and then the five finger on C. I'm gonna go through it slowly, give you some simple ways to get comfortable, and then I'm gonna do the left hand, and then I'm gonna give you some basic exercises to work on. Also, I'm gonna include some mistakes that I've observed students uh, have made as it's a journey, and we have to learn by doing, and so don't get frustrated. It's gonna happen. So here we have the hand shape. So we're gonna just play the one, the two, and the E, Third finger on G, and then five. All right, I'm gonna say this a few times in this lesson. Please think about shifting your arm weight. We don't wanna just press from here. We're not just glued. Third finger. Common mistakes. Oftentimes learners, when they're playing, they get to this note and they might splat. A few reasons might be because you are glued here. You can move a little bit. I'm bringing my elbow out a bit, not too much, but whatever I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm leading with the elbow, the hand, wrist, and forearm is aligned with the elbow. That's important. So just practice that, get used to that sound. So we're not thinking about a beat or anything like that for now, we're just getting used to opening up our hands and shifting our arm weight. Left hand, okay. Hey guys, so sorry to interrupt. If you're getting value out of this video, please hit the thumbs up button so it reaches other awesome people like you. Back to the lesson. So we have five finger in C, four finger on E. So if you haven't done that before, it will feel uncomfortable. Common things students do is play like this, and then like this, and yes, I'm exaggerating. You can go ahead and bring your hands in a bit, okay? A lot of teachers think this is a no-no when your thumbs are down. Well, uh, since I don't know you, your hand might be pretty small and you can't always reach an octave, but if you want to practice trying to bring your hand in, then your hand can stay there as I move. The other thing, some students might have thicker fingers, so if this is uncomfortable, you can leave your third finger on top of this key here. Five and four. Well, I get this, why not the third finger? Sometimes I do that as well. The benefit of working with the five and four are a few reasons. One, it's this is a standard way to practice. That's the fingering five, four, two, one. However, you are playing within the octave now. So we're trying to open up our hands so we can work on accuracy. Lastly, these fingers count and it's really important to get them playing in different positions because that will help you down the road when you're playing pieces. Besides, these fingers are pretty weak. So this is an exercise I created with some students. Just play the five finger and then a few times, and then the forefinger. Right away, I'm thinking my hand and arm, because I'm on camera, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I want you to make sure you think of that, and then back. And then some students like this. Now I'll play the whole arpeggio. Generally, I'd play a little more on the keyboard, so I have here. That might be tricky at first because you might splat. So splatting again is when you have like, you might have some coordination issues. So go back to that exercise, just play separately. So you're doing a bunch of things at once when you're working on detailed basics. You're first of all, just trying to coordinate to get these fingers to work correctly and try to try something different. And the other thing you're working on is bringing the hand shape and learning about your body. So be patient, that's really important. Basic exercise here. The right hand's gonna play, 
by itself, up and then down, two beats, and then the left hand. All right, so what I like to have everyone do is just make sure you have your hand position ready. I'll demonstrate the first part. Three, four, and then left. Let's try that. I'm going to go slower. Here I go. And one, two, three, four, and. Next pattern, which is very similar, but it's important to hear it in different ways and start in different ways. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to start up high and then descend. Okay, here we go. Four and high. All right, quick tip. If you get that down, if you feel comfortable, please listen to your sound and think each note hopefully is at the same volume and you guessed it. These fingers will probably play softer at first. So a few things you can do is have everything else play soft to just be patient and make that a goal for your next practice session. All right, here we go. We are gonna play the C arpeggio both hands. Make sure that you can look at your hands, make sure everything is placed well in regards to the hand shape. Here I go, and slow. Another thing when you're playing, I remember this with a student, playing here, third finger. If you have a big finger, you might do that, okay? So you really wanna to try to feel between the keys and take your time. Some might have to play here, that's okay. Just be aware of how you're lining up your body with your playing. All right, the last exercise I wanna show you is contrary motion. The right hand's gonna start high, then descend. The left hand's gonna go low, go high. Don't worry if you can't get this yet, you can always come back to the video, but it might be a fun exercise for some of you. And if you can get it, then just make sure that everything else is in a line in regards to what we talked about with technique. So I have this. The other thing is you can play the notes really slow, get comfortable, and then now you'll do the same thing, but the right hand will start low, the left hand goes high. So now the left hand is descending, right hand ascending. Here I go. All right, let me know in the comments how you practice the arpeggio and most importantly, if this video was of help. I wish everyone well. And by the way, if you want, you wanna check out these scale videos that will set you up for success or maybe you're ready for some chord and accompanying work. Bye for now, take care.